Hey, Mike here. So today we are going to go over the Obsidian AI wiki generation in action. So yesterday I showed you the template itself. It's right over here. Um, if you missed it, it's also on the Patreon as a downloadable file. So you can also get it that way. But today I thought that uh, the best way to really show how this all works is to give you examples. So we're going to go over four examples that I personally go through almost on a daily basis and then a few things to keep in mind. So this is the overview of the little video we're going to be doing today. First things first, let's go over the idea development and thought mapping. So here you can see I just have a few jotted down notes, something about AI transforming the modern workplace at a rapid pace. And I have a few topics that I want to go over as well. So let's get into the generation portion here with a forward slash wiki. Now, before I enable this or generate this more so, let me show you how to enable that in the settings real quick. So command P for the command palette, or I'm sorry, command comma, because we want to go into the settings. Actually, we will go all the way down to text generator and just make sure that modal suggest is on and activated. I do have a lot of other videos going through all of these settings in depth. So be sure to check those out as well. Now that we've made sure that is enabled, Let's do the forward slash wiki and enter. Now we have the little menu here. We don't want the title in this case simply because I just want to have the context be the clean notes. And as for additional context, I rarely use this. However, when I do want to use it, it's very nice to have this option to input something into it. Now, all that's left to do is generate. With the generation complete, let's take a quick look at what was generated. So we have the title, The Impact of AI on the Modern Workplace. That fits perfectly well with our first sentence here and the general feeling of what the text is about. We have each little separate section, automation of repetitive tasks, data-driven decision-making, enhanced customer experience, so on and so forth. You have each of these topics that you wanted to explore in the beginning outlined here perfectly, and each of them goes into enough detail for you to do extra research on, or if you want to generate more to very easily generate continually from this point forward. Next up, let's take a look at meeting notes to actionable tasks. So here you have just a bunch of notes that were taken throughout a meeting. And let's say that we want to turn these into actionable items. So let's do the same thing, forward slash wiki. And within the additional context portion, we are going to add, I want these to be actionable items within a checklist. Once again, we are just going to delete this title here because we want to provide clean context to the AI and generate. So let's see what those results will look like. All right, so after about 15 seconds of waiting, this is what has been generated. Let's take a quick look. Meeting summary, aligning team efforts for the final quarter. So it understands that it's quarter four, which is of course the final quarter. Compile a list of hiring requirements, actionable item, actionable item. Yeah, it has an actionable item for each and every piece of this section. It allows us to create a list of things to go over. Of course, it's not going to tell us exactly what to do. It's not going to give us exact check boxes to complete because number one it doesn't have context of what the company is about or any other details that are necessary to create actual checkbox items but it does tell you what to create these actionable items based off of it even gives us a little expert insight section which goes over three main points of what this meeting was necessarily about strategic hiring marketing campaign analysis and budget management all in all from just a little list of things that you would go over during a meeting, this kind of synopsis is really high quality in my opinion. For the third example, we are going to do a literature review and summaries. So I have an article here, it's called 13 Types of Cyber Attacks You Should Know in 2023. Let's hop into it. And as you can see, all it is is just an article that I have linked here and all of the highlights that I've made personally throughout the entire article. Now, this is a bit hard to not only read, but also reference. So this is where I use the wiki generation template and create a very detailed synopsis of what was gone over throughout this entire note. 
So as usual, let's invoke the forward slash wiki and start the generation process. As for additional context here, I can't really think of anything that would benefit. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's remove the little title piece here because that will throw things off a bit and generate. All right, so generation is done after about 20 seconds of waiting. So let's look at the outline here. And you can see it's very well written out. It's organized. And let's see, 13 types of cyber attacks you should know. And you have each one provided with a title example. It goes through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You're able to reference all of these very important general ideas at a moment's notice. And now for the fourth and final example, project planning. So in this scenario, we are pretending that we are launching a new product line and it's a new product line. It's an ambitious project, blah, blah, blah. You have key objectives, milestones. These are very basic notes, something that you would take during once again, a meeting, but a little more fleshed out than what we had in the previous two examples. Now, of course, you want to build out these ideas further. You don't want the AI to just regurgitate whatever you are inputting into it. You want it to provide its expert opinion, which is clearly stated in the GenWiki prompt itself. So let's see what it comes up with when we do this kind of wiki entry. As for the additional context, let's add this time something unique. Now, again, you are going to hear me say this over and over again as we go through these videos. Yes, of course, it's an artificial intelligence. That's what AI stands for. But when you are using it in this context, I really love thinking about it as assistive intelligence, because while, yes, it's an artificial intelligence and it can do so many things on its own, given, of course, your input, I like to label it an assistive intelligence because it really is a boost rather than a remake of whatever it is that you put into it. So if you put in high quality additional context and you are able to really give concise directions, you will receive higher quality results every single time. So for this example, we are going to do nothing more than tell it to go into detail, fleshing out this rough outline and really expand upon the key objectives. And as always, let's click that generate button and wait for the results. And the results are here. So from this little portion of text, we have all of this generated now. So let's go through this real quick. As you can see here, we have the outline very nicely laid out. We have key objectives as we wanted, gone through in detail. And it even mentions the budget of $50,000 that we have in this example scenario. We have all three key objectives. As you can see here, we have three of them gone through in detail. And this is just a great way to have a first rough draft of something more serious that you might send off to your partners within a business plan, potential investors, or maybe turn this into a slideshow of some sort. Really anything goes here. Now keep in mind, like I said, this should be a rough draft, not a final draft, because it does take some liberties when it comes to making decisions that you didn't really mention or go into detail. It infers a lot. It assumes that you you have a finance team and such. So maybe you do. I mean, it, you don't really mention it too much here. Not at all, actually. And so with these assumptions within the text, it's still much faster than writing out all of these details manually. And again, we get back to the main point at hand here. The more context that you give it, the better and higher quality results you will have. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Number one, for some reason, when you're splitting sections with triple dashes, it doesn't include any of that text before the triple dash within the context. So that's something to really be careful about. Let me show you an example here. I'm going to add a triple dash, and now I'm going to try to do a wiki generation. Now, you would think that all of this text would be included when I'm trying to generate the wiki here, but look what happens. None of that context is now included, only the title. I'm not sure if this is more so a feature rather than a bug, but it's something that I noticed on mistake and I was really confused for a good few minutes trying to figure out why it wasn't showing the context for me. 
Using other text generator functionalities, such as those found in the command palette, as you can see here, let's do text generator. You can feel free to use any of these, really try and test them out. But a few of them I found are just either really buggy, they don't give you what it says it gives you. I'm not sure if they're a work in progress. The token estimator isn't really that accurate. The text extractor tool, yeah, it uses a third party library, which isn't that accurate in and of itself. It's just things to keep in mind. This is certainly not a perfect program as of yet. I'm sure that with time and due diligence, we will see higher quality iterations or maybe just an entirely new evolved tool for Obsidian AI. That concludes today's video and I will see you tomorrow.